Hare Krishna again. My name is Vinod Manjari. I'm here to tell you about the beautiful epic book Bhagavad Gita as it is. This is the devotional science, the science of bhakti yoga. Yoga means to link, to connect, and bhakti means in devotion. So we can connect in different uh, ways of yoga, karma yoga, dhyana yoga, um, hatha yoga, ashtanga yoga. These are different types of yogas. And this book, Bhagavad Gita as it is, explains A to Z. It's a manual for life, uh, for yoga, for discovering our true spiritual identity. Um, it gives us the knowledge of the spiritual consciousness, uh, spirit soul, material nature, Ishvara, meaning the controller of this or creator of this universe, uh, material nature, karma, action, because we are all performing action. We are all compelled to um, perform some action. We can't even survive in this world without some action. Doing a job, uh, providing for our family, action is inevitable. We can't remain inactive. So Bhagavad Gita teaches us how and what is the action that will not create a reaction, a, a karmic footprint, as it were, consequence that will be um, negative impact on us. Negative action leads to negative consequence. Um, just like we understand the laws of the government, they have certain laws to ensure that um, we uh, live peacefully and not in a chaotic way. So if there's a crime or a criminal, they have to be bear the consequence. So this is karma. Then Bhagavad Gita also teaches us about time, kala. Everybody is bound up in this universe. Time is money to a businessman. Time is so precious. We see the seasons. We see everything is regulated. Uh, the sun comes up, the moon, all on time, precision. Time is such a huge factor. They've done metaphysical theories on time. They've done scientific theories on time. So time is something that everybody wants to um, analyze and understand. So Bhagavad Gita is a thorough understanding of these topics. So we were reading the introduction. The introduction to this book, written by uh, commentaries written by A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Srila Prabhupada, available in all the centres, ISKCON, um, International Society for Krishna Consciousness. You can get them from any of the centres. And um, you can get, look on Amazon, uh, you can get this book freely available. Um, uh, sorry, I mean freely available, as, as in widely available. But um, we were reading the introduction, so we will continue this epic journey to know and discover our consciousness and what is matter and what is spirit. So this is a theistic science based on um, understanding from a higher source of knowledge, just like we consult a teacher. If we want to learn medicine, we consult a teacher. We cannot just learn from the book. So we therefore we consult the teachers in the lineage of this uh, succession, disciplic succession handed down. So as I explained before, we don't go to a quack doctor. We go to an authorised doctor. We don't go to a university that's not authorised. So these, um, this science is authorised through a disciplic lineage. Um, it's not concocted. It's um, coming from Krishna himself, who gives that knowledge to the first living entity, Brahma. And... Um, it's handed down this way. And this is priceless knowledge. Why is it priceless? Because 
We all want to know how we can be happy. Can we be happy with matter, material things, in material consciousness? So far, the history of the world shows that material uh, assets, land, um, <coughs> there's so many wars fought over land. Um, you can see that material things do not actually lead to uh, complete happiness. So we'll read this introduction and you will understand. Um, so far we've covered um, how we receive this knowledge, just like Arjuna, he received the spirit of Bhagavad Gita from Krishna uh, in, a, in a mood of um, devotion. Without having that mood of devotion, one cannot understand the mystery of Bhagavad Gita. We learnt that so far. And that we have to develop a relationship. Arjuna was in a relationship with Krishna as his friend and devotee. That is why this knowledge was given to him. Krishna does not give this knowledge to envious, hatred people. You know, uh, so this is what we learnt so far. Um, we understand Bhagavad Gita as it is from the speaker of the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna himself. Um, and it was handed down through the disciplic succession. Um, and so we'll continue where we left off. Um, so we must understand Bhagavad Gita in a spirit of devotion, not thinking one is superior to the Supreme Lord Krishna, the Creator. Um, let's read on. Just what is Bhagavad Gita? The purpose of Bhagavad Gita is to deliver mankind from the nations of material existence. Every man is in difficulty in so many ways, as Arjuna also was in difficulty in having to fight the battle of Kurukshetra. So the history behind this is that Arjuna had to fight his relatives who were leading an adharmic life. Um, Duryodhana was his um, brother, cousin, and um, he was leading a very um, destructive demoniac mentality. He wanted the land all for himself. He didn't. He was squabbling and fighting over the inheritance of the kingdom. Um, he was doing so many demoniac things. Um, he was um, <laughs> behaving, uh, raping women. He was doing uh, abominable activities. He was in the body consciousness, ego, I. I am the controller of this land, I. Um, the center. This is what material consciousness is. I am at the center. I, me and mine mentality. So um, that's what he was doing. And Arjuna was in a dilemma that he had to fight his own brother, cousin, as well as his teacher who was on that side and they were all on the wrong side of, Ad of the... Uh, they were on the side of Adharma. So he was in a dilemma. I have to fight these people now because the peace, um, the peace um, um, methods, they didn't want to go for peace, a peaceful um, solution to this. Um, uh, so let's read on. Every man, so every man is in difficulty in so many ways and we have experience of that. How many difficulties we experience? And so this Bhagavad Gita is there to deliver us from the nations of material existence. Nations meaning um, ignorance of material existence. We don't know who we really are. We accept that we are this body. We are the African, American, Indian. And um, <coughs> we do not recognize our spiritual identity as spirit soul. Um, so let's read on. Arjuna surrendered unto Sri Krishna and consequently 
this Bhagavad Gita was spoken. Not only Arjuna, but every one of us in, is full of anxieties because of this material existence. Our very existence is in the atmosphere of non-existence. So this is a very um, amazing way of um, understanding this. We all have experience of anxieties. Um, we all go to work, we all have to earn money, we all have to live, we have to pay bills, we have to um, deal with birth, death, old age and disease, which are inevitable. So um, these are where all the sufferings come from. There are three types of suffering, adhyatmic, adhibodhik, adhidaivik. Those that come from an, uh, other living entities, other living uh, beings, could it be animals, could it be insects, could it be people, cause us distress. Then there are natural calamities, earthquakes, floods, these cause us distress. So, these are the different types of distress in this world. And the biggest distress is because it comes from the attachment to this body, thinking I am this body. Um, so we're full of anxieties. Our, every, our very existence is in the atmosphere of non-existence because we know we're going to die. This body is temporary. So that very atmosphere of non-existence, we're going to be annihilated. That fear that I'm going to lose my life, my what's going to happen to my family. So this is the atmosphere of non-existence. Actually, we're not meant to be threatened by non-existence. Our existence is eternal, but somehow or other we are put into asat. Asat refers to that which does not exist. Asat, illusion. This body is temporary and it is... Um, bound to give us miseries for example if we start to eat it feels enjoyable but if we overeat then the body gets sick and therefore what was at first nectar becomes poison ultimately we're attached to overly attached to our family members we feel pain that we may lose them something may happen to them um and therefore, we are caught in this ego of, I am the doer, I am the controller, I have, have full control on everything. When we have control on nothing, really, we're going to die, birth, death, old age and disease. We're going to lose this life. We're going to lose our family members, possibly. Um, they will lose us. So this is Asat thinking that we are building our life on the foundation of something that is not reality or temporary reality, if you want to call it that, material reality. Out of so many human beings who are suffering, there are a few who are actually inquiring about their position as to what they are, why they are put into this awkward position and so on. Unless one is awakened to this position of questioning his suffering, unless he realises that he doesn't want suffering, but rather wants to make a solution to all sufferings, then one is not to be considered a perfect human being. Humanity begins when this sort of inquiry is awakened in one's mind. Animals can't think this way. Their consciousness is much lower. They just eat, sleep, mate, defend. That's all they can do. Beyond that, they cannot um, function. But a human being has higher intelligence and he can inquire, why am I suffering? Why have I got to die? Why have I got to have birth, old age, disease and death? What is the nature and purpose of this existence? Is it just that we live, we, we, we have birth, old age, disease, death, we die, we... Um, and then we're annihilated. Is that the be all and end all of life? Or is there a purpose behind all this suffering? All this, every, everything we see in the universe, in the material world. What is the purpose behind it? This is the initial inquiry. Brahma Jigyasa it's called. To try to under awaken 
Why are we suffering? This is the very basic. Um, to begin a human level at least, humanity begins there. In Brahma Sutra, it is, this inquiry is called Brahma Jigyasa. Why is it called Brahma Jigyasa? Because Brahma Dev had this same inquiry when he was uh, appeared from the navel, the, lot the navel of Mahavishnu. He appeared on a lotus uh, flower. He immediately wanted to say, where is my origin? Where did I begin from? So he tried to think where down the lotus stem did where is my origin? How did I come to be? This is Brahma Jigyasa. And then Krishna appeared to give him this knowledge. He told him to me uh, meditate. He heard the word tapa, tapa, perform austerity. And then by that austerity, sadhana, practice, you will get the divine knowledge of who you are and your origins. So this is Brahma Jigyasa. Then Brahma had the knowledge to meditate and perform austerity. And then Krishna gave him this knowledge from his flute. This knowledge came into his heart, Divya Gyan. This is transcendental knowledge, which cannot be just heard, got from books. Academic learning, it is beyond that, it's transcendental, it's beyond material understanding. Our mind, intelligence is limited. But this Divya Gyan, which comes through the heart um, and, and um, permeates our being, this is transcendental knowledge. Let's read on. Every activity of the human being is to be considered a failure unless he inquires about the nature of the absolute. So we're living in a very relative world, duality, happiness, distress. We can measure distress against happiness, so then we, it's relative, you know. So, um, but we, we um, unless we inquire about the nature of the absolute reality, then, where absolute means there is no relative duality. Just like in Vaikuntha, where the Vishnu Krishna lives, Vishnu, there is no sorrow, there is no suffering. It is absolute. There's no relative uh, dualities there. So here we can understand life. Be our life is considered a failure unless we have inquired about this nature of our absolute existence, absolute reality, spiritual reality. Why? Because we will just be like the animals, eat, drink, sleep, mate, defend. And we will have not inquired as to who we really are, what is the origin of life, and where are we um, destination, where is our spiritual journey, where are we going to? If this place is Dukalya Mashashvatam, full of misery and, and temporary, then where do we actually belong? So unless we make those inquiries that life is, the Vedanta Sutras, Brahma Sutra says, this life is a failure. Therefore, no matter you are a great personality, you may be a professor, you may be a prime minister, you may have achieved so many acc uh, uh, acc uh, um, accreditations, in the material universe but if you haven't inquired about this then your life is a failure because you do not know how to get out of this cycle of birth and death therefore those who begin to question why they are suffering or where they came from where they shall go after death are proper students for understanding Bhagavad Gita the sincere student should also have a firm respect for the Supreme Personality of Godhead, just as student, so such a student was Arjuna. So we inquired before in the previous uh, topic that um, one must at least theoretically accept that Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. This way, one, de one um, delays one's um, disbelief, as it were, in order to 
have the proper mood to theoretically accept Krishna is the supreme and then have the willingness to inquire why am I suffering then Krishna will see that sincerity in you and give you that knowledge if you have a challenging dismissive kind of attitude that um, this is all a myth how can you if you approach the Bhagavad Gita in that way this is all a myth it's all symbolic made up then you will not, the Bhagavad Gita will remain a mystery. So we must be like a student, like Arjuna, his mood. At least do that much. Uh, and have that initial inquiry, why am I suffering? So this is what we've learned here so far. Some people say, oh, Krishna is a Hindu god, an Indian god. But we say, no, Krishna, actually, God has no name, no nomenclature. He is beyond nomenclatures of this material world. He is beyond material um, des um, uh, designations. But he is known, how? By his activities, by his attributes. Therefore, the name is given to him, Krishna. Krishna means all attractive. Literally, it's just translated as the one who is all attractive. So that's one of God's attributes, one of his um, qualities. So this is why the word Krishna um, denotes God. So let's read on. Lord Krishna descends specifically to re-establish the real purpose of life. When man forgets that purpose, even then, out of many, many human beings who awaken, there may be one who actually enters the spirit of understanding his position. And for him, this Bhagavad Gita is spoken. Actually, we are all fo followed by the tiger of nations. But the Lord is very much merciful upon the living entities, especially human beings. To, to this end, he spoke the Bhagavad Gita, making his friend Arjuna his student. So once we understand here the purpose of life, which we have forgotten, and when we begin to awaken and understand with a spirit of understanding what is our position in relation to the universe to the supreme personality what is our relation are we equal to him are we greater than him are we his part and parcel in which case we are his instrument we are part of him we are parts of the whole just like the spark i've given this example many times the fire and the spark of that fire that is what we are. We are minute, he is infinite. So that spark of fire, if it falls on the ground, it will eventually extinguish. So this is why yoga, connecting, is so important. Connecting our consciousness to the higher consciousness. There's no doubt in anybody's mind that we are not this body. We can see that. A dead body is inert. But a live body is full of consciousness, awareness. Chaitana, we call it in uh, Sanskrit. Chaitana, consciousness. We may not be God conscious. We may, may be materially conscious of our ego, who I am, I am this body. We, we are trapped in that consciousness. But eternally we exist, just like Krishna is eternally existing. The body dies but the soul is not subject to being burnt, cut, um, annihilated. We exist beyond. Just like when we're a child, our body changes to a boy. The body is changing all the time, but do we change? Do, do, do I change the same, the person, the personality? No. Just like that, our soul, body decays, moves on. But the soul, the personality, the person never changes. That is a different thing that we become an adult. We think in an adult way. But we, the person, don't actually change. 
So in that analogy, we can understand that logically, when this body goes, we will continue to exist. We won't be inert. We are not just inert matter, bunch of chemicals or hormones. You know, this is what people are mis misunderstanding, that we are just this body, bunch of chemicals and hormones. In that case, we would answer to them, why do you say my hand? It means your hand is different to you. You don't identify with this bunch of chemicals. So this is um, how we understand that we are eternal. And the Lord is very merciful. He gives us this knowledge. He spoke the Bhagavad Gita. So we will um, read a little more. Being an associate of Lord Krishna, Arjuna was above all ignorance. But Arjuna was put into ignorance on the battlefield of Kurukshetra just to question. So here we can see that Arjuna was a pure devotee, a, a associate of Krishna. Therefore, he could not really be bewildered with these uh, nations or ignorance, not knowing why am I suffering, where, where, where is my purpose of life. He didn't really be bewildered, but he was acting bewildered in on behalf of Krishna so that Krishna could give this science to us. So, <coughs> question, uh, just to question Lord Krishna about the problems of life, he was put into ignorance. So that the Lord could explain them for the benefit of future generations of human beings and chalk out the plan of life. Then man could act accordingly and perfect the mission of human life. Um, so now we're going on to what is the subject matter? First of all, we explain what is Bhagavad Gita. It is a manual to help us who are suffering and to actually help us to inquire about our true position, the absolute reality. Sorry, it's raining in here, so you can probably hear the uh, rain. I'm sorry if it's uh, causing a problem on the um, sound. Um, I hope it doesn't, and you can hear me. I'll talk a little bit louder to drown out the raining. Um, so here we're going on to now the subject matter of the Bhagavad Gita. The subject of the Bhagavad Gita entails the comprehension of five basic truths. First of all, the science of God is explained, and then the constitutional position of the living entity, the jivas. There is Ishwara, which is means controller, and there are jivas, meaning us, the living entities, the parts and parcels, which are controlled. We are controlled. We are not the supreme controller. Yes, we have free will, a certain amount of free will. Krishna does not interfere in our free will. But we are not the supreme controller. We don't control the moon, the um, stars, the, the, the sun, the planets. We're not doing all of that. We didn't create all of that. So we're not the supreme controllers. Um... If a living entity says that he is not controlled, but that he is free, then he is insane. I know this sounds very harsh, but this is what the um, previous teachers explained, the, the Vedanta Sutra explains, that's madness, to think that you are free. We are actually none of us free. We are controlled by our own senses, or by our own mind. The mind can become your friend or your enemy. The mind can drag you um, into abominable activities. And um, we're not actually free. Um, the material consciousness is controlling us through the different modes of na material nature. Illusion is controlling us. We think we are this body. We've identified as this body, African, American, Indian. Now we nowadays we even have gender gender fluid. People don't identify as man woman. We're identifying with anything that pops in our head. Even 
We choose to, des I, I choose to be a table today. I identify as a table. Isn't, isn't this madness? How can you identify as something that's completely inert? Why do we identify with this body which is inert? Without the living force, it's dead. So this is madness. The living being is controlled in every respect, at least in his conditioned life. This is what we call conditioned life. We're conditioned by the laws of material nature, just like we're conditioned by the laws of the government. If we break them, then we're in prison. We have rules and regulations that we have to observe in order for, for sanity. They're just the same way we have rules in the view of the universe, karmic reactions, the law of karma. What is right action? What is wrong action? So, um, so in the Bhagavad Gita, the subject matter deals with Ishvara, the controller. Who is the con supreme controller? And the jivas, the controlled living entities, the minute parts. Prakriti, material nature and time. The duration of existence of the whole universe or the manifestation of material nature. And karma, activity. They are, they are, these are all discussed. The cosmic manifestation is full of different activities. All living beings are engaged in different activities. From Bhagavad Gita we must learn what is God, what the living entities are, what is Prakriti, material nature, and what is the cosmic manifestation, and how is it controlled by time, and what the activities of the living entities are. So these are the subjects that we'll go further, a little bit more in detail later on, as we develop this um, discussion. So here we are. We leave it there. So something for you to digest and understand and give food for thought. I hope this has helped. And um, we'll continue the discussion and uh, hopefully you'll get a better perspective. Thank you very much for listening.